All right, everybody, welcome back. This is Shifty. This is a uh, video two of the tutorial for Seven Days of Dies. First seven days, we will be doing day one. Uh, when you start the game for the first time or any other time, you have to give it a name. I'm gonna give our game Toot Run, short for Tutorial Run. Uh, I'll go ahead and we'll get started. So we're just gonna go Toot. Toot run. All right. So let's say you typed in a name and you realize, hey, I misspelled something, or you just don't like the name, or whatever it is. If you go ahead and hit X, you can edit it. If you hit B, you can cancel everything. And then if you really are happy with everything, go ahead and hit A. We're just going to go ahead and hit A. So loading up the world will take a minute. I'll see you in a few. All right, well, we spawned into the game. It's currently seven o'clock in the morning. Uh, we got the basic survival message here. Dear friend, Wasteland's unforgiving, blah, 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 blah. Good luck, Noah. Noah's a good guy for warning us. So we'll go ahead and hit continue. It goes, hey, here's your quest tracker. Our quest tracker, of course, is up there in the upper right corner, right next to that circle. We go ahead and go ahead and hit okay. And we can quickly take a look around. Looks like I'm in the snow area. Normally, if you're not used to being in this area, um, you know, the snow area can be harsh, but it looks like I'm very close to the green area, so I think we're just gonna stay here. I do got a nice, looks like two-story house. Let's take a look and see what we got around us real quick, just so I have an idea. Yeah, we're right there on the edge. Um... I will go ahead and we're gonna I'm gonna stay here because if I ever have to if I get really too cold I can just run over there all right so let's go over a little bit of the uh, screen here so again at the very top of our screen is our compass you can see as I turn around it shows you north east west and south right the whole thing right below that will show the day and the time so currently we're on day one time is 70 or 716, 717, so on and so forth. That time clock is in military time, so after 12 o'clock, it's gonna go 13, 14, 15, and so on and so forth. If you don't know military time, I will provide a link in the description, but it's really simple. Just minus 12, whatever the time is. Simple as that. So if it says 13 minus 12, that leaves you with one. So, uh, right there at the bottom of our screen, very bottom of the very middle, that is your tool belt. That's quick items you can access real quick. Um, and then over to our bottom left is our health and our stamina. That's the blue line is our stamina. Uh, when you run around, your stamina goes down. Good news is when you stop running around, your stamina will regenerate. When you work out and do stuff, uh, punching, kicking. Oh, look at that. We got food off the bat. We got a nice... Uh, Damn, we'll get some good stuff here right off the bat. It's pretty nice. I've never got that lucky before. Um, we need to like punch the grass, right? We're gonna have to punch some grass because right now it says gather fibers. I'll explain what fibers are here in a second. Let me just finish looting the car and everything else real quick. So it does prompt you, like when you look at an item, it says press Y. You just tap Y and you search. Uh, I am pushing down on my left joystick to take everything. You could manually take everything out by going over, you know, moving to the left joystick, going over to the uh, item, hitting A to pick it up, and then going over to your backpack. That's that big circle right there. Um, and then hitting A again, and you place it in. Um, empty cans, just a little FYI. Uh, they're kind of useless, so we just go ahead and scrap it. So I hit Y on the item to select it up here, and then we could push... Uh, Right on the D-pad to scrap it, down on the D-pad to get rid of it. We want to scrap it because it will give us iron later down the line. So, as our quest marker though suggests this to us, it says craft a bedroll. So, we have items we can craft. Uh, before we start gathering the materials, I'll go over that list real quick. So when you hit the select button, I do believe that's the select button, the two box button. 
Uh, you're automatically set to players. Now, when you invite your friends, you can invite up to four players. You can have a whole list of players. Uh, when it's your friend, you go ahead and hit the plus sign right here underneath ally. And then when they're in your world, you go ahead and hit this button. There'll be a black box here normally. You hit that button, and it will track your friend. Uh, this is obviously recording my voice. This will show you, like, let's say it's you and your buddies. It will show you how many zombies I killed in this game. Now, if you go to a different game, all those stats will change. The pin right next to it is your journal. It shows you quests that you need to get done or quests that you have completed. And then, of course, you have your quests, right? Our quest right here says basic survival, complete one out of eight. The first thing is to craft a bedroll. All right. Now, normally when you're crafted or moving around through these, you use the left bumper and the right bumper real fast, but we're going to go this simple. Skills, right? Underneath skills, you have uh, 50 skills in total, right? You can, while you have the skills, you know, highlighted, you can push right or left on the right joystick and you can, you know, go through them all. Um, something you might want to think about early on is putting at least a point or two into uh, survivor and camel so you get hungry and thirsty the more you work right and so survivor survivor will allow you to not be as hungry as often and of course the camel will allow you not to be as thirsty as often makes sense another one you might want to put some points in early on is sexual tyrannosaurus uh you don't go through your stamina as fast and it regenerates faster all right, so those are the three like starting starting places you're gonna to want to put points. We currently have no points because we haven't done anything. But you'll get points by beating up grass, knocking down trees, building materials, resupplying, uh, or repairing items, uh, digging out holes. You get points for pretty much everything you do. So that's a good thing. So if we go to the next one. Is our map right? This shows you the map. You know, like, when I first looked at the map, I had an idea where I went. So there's two ways to get to the map. One, you know, you, you hit the start button, and you hit the map button. All right, the other way is, if you press and hold X, you get this circle, right? And it's pretty much everything in your inventory, right? Crafting, character, map, skills, quests, journal, players. But if you, and I'm using the left joystick to circle around, you just aim and look, wait for the circle to be completely full, you let go, boom, pops it back up. All right, so the next one on the list is your character, right? This shows you your character right here. We'll show you, like, your stats of stuff you can, with you know, uh, either fight off or heal up on, right? Right here will be clothes you're wearing. As you can see right now, I'm naked. We go ahead and put these boots on. So, again, just like moving items to your inventory back and forth, you can hit A and place it, or you can just hit down on the right joystick and it puts it right where you need to go all right and then over here if like you have a broken leg or you got poisoned or if you drink a tea or beer or coffee whatever the effect is will show up here and kind of give you an idea what it's like right here will be your player stats i'm currently level one my wellness is 100 out of 200 which means we can max that out at 200 by eating certain foods will increase our wellness but there are skill points where you can increase your wellness. Now, I've maxed out my wellness, but then I ate up a lot of points. Um, so right now, I just like to leave it at 200. You know, it's something you can do later on. Our food and water, since we're starting day one, it's back. You know, we've eaten up 90% of it. You can see the temperature. It feels like this is pretty much what is going to be your temperature. Our temperature's slowly going up, and then of course the same stats as before. When we were on players, zombies killed, players killed, deaths, how far you traveled, so on and so forth. So that's basically the basics of uh, the thing. And then the last thing is the hammer, the crafting. This is the one you're going to spend a lot of time in. right? The game wants us to make a bedroll right here. So underneath basic, you'll, you'll use a good number of these basic items. And again, while you have a certain area selected, you hit right or left. Or you, you go right or left on your right joystick, and you can you can swabble between the pages that are available. But you can also go up here and hit the arrow if you want to. And if you really are like, let's say it's something like on the house. The house has like 10 pages. But you know the specific items on a certain page. You can go ahead and go in here 
and hit and pick a specific page desired number you want to go to. Right? We, so we can enter in two. Go ahead and enter. Boom. Look at that. Now we're on page two. All right. Uh, so I suggest when you're playing your game, you go through some of these. You got decorations. You got clothes. Medicine. Food you can craft. Uh, most foods you can craft ain't actually food food, like the cornmeal or the corn seed. Uh, cornmeal uh, is used later to make cornbread. Cornbread is a source of food that will increase your wellness. Corn seed, uh, we can break the corn that we have currently on us and make corn seed, and then we can plant the corn seed and get more corn later to eventually make more corn uh, meal and make cornbread. All right? So on and so forth. Um, apparently I only have one page worth of items because I'm hitting the joystick and nothing's happening. Alright. Then you have your tools. Tools are really cool. Uh, bob wire is a good defense. we got bob wire fence. So on and so forth. You can also craft your tools. And then weapons here. This is where we'll craft bows and arrows and all kinds of weapons to survive. But we also create... Uh, Right here, we got repair kits. Repair kits will will repair weapons. They'll repair like the mini bike if you ever get one. Uh, certain tools will require uh, a repair kit. So you know, it, you know, and it, everything that you select, right? Every item that you select in here has a list of items that'll pop up right here that you need. So it says right here, need. We need one of these. We have zero zero five. And so on and so forth. So now that we know all that, right? You go ahead and go through this. You can take a look. But that's how it works. Normally what will happen is I need to craft something. I'll hit the start button. I'll hit right bumper. And it'll bring us right to the tool areas. So let's go ahead now that I've explained the hub. And a brief description of where things are so you know how to do things. So the very first thing says craft a bedroll. Gather plant fibers. Makes sense if you read it correctly, plant fibers. We have to destroy the plants. In our case, we're going to destroy the grass. Now that I do know that later down the line, we're going to need more than just the 20 pieces of grass that it's asking us for. So I'm going to probably punch a lot more just because I know what is coming up next. So when you're like exploring for the first time and you don't know all the quests, just do what I do. You know, punch the grass, pick up the rocks, uh, the small... Um, trees, they're the very small ones that are look, you know, they look dead. Go ahead and beat them down. Pick up any rock you can, because rock is uh, useful for creating uh, a stone axe later down the line. Uh, sometimes you punch the ground. It is what it is. So uh, currently, it says I'm ready to go. I picked up enough grass. Um. I'm going to hit a few more pieces just to be safe. And that's already knocked out. I wonder. I didn't do that, I don't think. Um, I don't think I did that. Anyways. Uh, we'll go ahead and punch some more grass just for a little bit. Yeah, I know. Punching the grass. Yay. You know, it is what it is for the game. Uh, eventually, we won't worry about punching the grass because we won't really need it. But for right now... Let's just go ahead and punch some grass. Uh, one of the quest lines down the line is to craft clothing. You need grass. So we might as well just go ahead and punch it. And get a, get a good amount going. Uh, eventually we're going to clear out all this grass anyways. So it really doesn't hurt us to just to start clearing it out. Um, some grasses uh, will give you wood and grass. So... Um, just pay attention to that. Alright. So I think we're good to go. Can we get into this house? Uh, normally when you spawn near a house like this. Um, you'll have access to the house right off the bat. Like that. We clearly have access to this house. We got to do a lot of reinforcing before day one. Just to be safe. But... I'm going to go ahead and look for a good spot. You know what? I think I'm going to put it down. Uh, I don't want to put it down right there. Let's put it down right there. Hang on. Ah, 
As you can notice, I'm getting this weird black circle. That's coal. Coal is used eventually down the line to make um, gunpowder. So it's okay that that's going on. Um, you know, we're just going to put our bedroll right there for right now. Did I just see a chicken? Am I seeing things? I must be seeing things. Alright, so... We go ahead, hit the select button, go over, hit right bumper, we go up the bedroll, and then we push up on the D-bat, D-pad, push up on the D-pad to craft it. Now it takes 20 seconds, so it's going to take a minute. So let's just wait. So the, the bedroll, the objective of the bedroll is, it's a respawn location. So if you die anywhere, you can respawn either on your bedroll or near your bedroll. Now if you're just starting out and you didn't, you know... We're very confused about what that was for. That's what it's for. It's for you to be able to respawn. As you see right now, I'm currently turning it. I'm hitting the right trigger to turn it. I'm trying to get it so I can parallel it to that wall right there. Boom! Placed it down. I know it's dark. You can't see it. Give me a second here. So the bedroll is down. You really do not sleep in this game, so there's no point in like being next to your bedroll. It's just a respawn location, so you can respawn in. Alright, so now that that's done and said, the next item on the list says craft a stone axe. You need two plant fibers, two wood, and five stone. We don't have enough stone, we have four to five. So we could find stone, which is why you want to kind of like look around for stone. Right? We're looking around, find a stone, we got enough stone now. Uh, if you get in an area and you can't find the stone, normally... Uh, with the block durability being down so low, which is good for us, but if it's not low for you, this may take a little bit longer. But these cinder blocks right here, um, these cinder blocks right here, we could punch them, right? Yeah, it sounds stupid, but as you can see right there at the bottom right, I'm getting stunned. So even if this was, you know, the block durability was set at 100, and it would take you a little bit longer to punch through this thing, you would still get stunned. So just a little FYI, you can always punch anything stone, rock, the road, Cinder blocks, and you'll get stone. So, like before, just like we did with the bed roll, we go ahead and hit the start button, hit right bumper. We are on the crafting, and we're on basics again. We go down, go to stone axe right here. We're going to push A on it to select it, push up on the D-pad, and make it. Just got to wait. The, the stone axe is really quick. With our block durability down really low, this will take... No time at all and knock out these bigger trees and all the stuff. When you have it set for 100%, it takes a little bit longer, but not much. Alright, so again, we're on the next part of the quest. It says craft plant fiber clothing. So, remember earlier when I was saying, hey, we're going to need some more grass to make some clothing? Obviously, I am already have enough. So let's just go ahead and I'm going to punch a few more just so we have some extras just to be safe. But, uh, yeah. So that was basically the start of this. Uh, with the block durability down low at 25%, I'm, at, I'm easily able to knock this out, clear out the area real quick. And we're going to knock out all these trees, let in some light so we can see what's going on. But let's just go ahead and let's start crafting our clothes. So, again, hit the start button, hit the right bumper to go over to crafting. And then this, we will not do this under basic. We will actually go to clothing. Now it says here we need to craft uh, pants, shirts, a hood, a shoes, and a gloves. Well, when you have this selected, just go ahead. Because we have some fiber right here, we're going to get some of this other clothes. But normally, if I didn't have the fiber, because normally I wouldn't have it, it would just be the plant fiber stuff. So we just start at the top and work our way down. Plant fiber gloves. Hit A to select it. Up on the D-pad. The hood. The pants. The shirt and the shoes. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit right bumper, which will bring me to my character. And then, with that being the case, I can go ahead and just start putting the clothes on. Since we are in the cold, we definitely want clothes. Uh, if let's say we were in the tundra, we'd probably make these clothes, take them off. If we were in the desert, we would definitely make these clothes and take them off. But because we are not. In the desert we are in the snow we want all the clothes we can get our hands on right now because it's just gonna be that cold so earlier in the last video we set the loot abundance 
to uh to five days again like i said in that last video with the loot abundance being set for five days the loot around an area that we will not be at is going to respawn every five days but because this is going to be our main house and we're going to do most of our work here everything around this area will not respawn so i this is just my own thing you don't have to do this but uh, my own thing i can't i just destroy it because if it's not going to respawn unless i'd be away from my house for five days which would be almost retarded because why i mean i don't get why you would be away from your place for five days but if you are you know i guess you can see that being the case now inside there's a lot of furniture and stuff you could use the furniture as a way to store items and they won't go away um i've had some glitches with furniture like the the stuff holding my stuff uh so you'll see me destroy it just because i've had bugs oh i forgot to put my boots on i forgot you got to put the boots on after you craft it, you have to wear it. Alright. I was wondering why the quest line didn't move on. So, as the quest line moves on, I'm just clearing out the area. Because, um, I'm gonna do it anyways. Because we, we want to be able to make farms, right? Food and all this other stuff around our, our places. Uh... Which we can't, we can still do it in the snow. It still will work. Oh, I'm so glad I did this because this is part of our quest eventually down the line. But that's what a bird's nest looks like. Easier to find in the snow in the desert area because they stick out in the grass area. They don't, they're not as noticeable because, you know, they're usually surrounded by grass. Alright, so the next quest is basically we got to make a melee weapon. Melee weapons are very powerful against the zombies. Uh, the very first one we have to craft is a wood club, right? You can find this under basic, I do believe. Yep, there it is right there on page two. Um, there are stronger wood clubs, like there, there are ones with uh, spikes around them. There are ones with uh, lob wire around it. Uh, you can make them stronger. The more you make, the stronger it gets. So like you can see right there, it my the stone axe, right? It's a level one. It's not very strong. Well, the more you craft, the ha the better your skills get in uh, that area. Crafting, so like we go up to skills, right? And we find crafting. Let's see if we can find crafting. Uh, where are you? I know it's here somewhere. Probably already saw it. And you're like, shifty, it's back there. You missed it. Where is it? Construction tools right here. That's what I was looking for. Um, we're almost at the next level. The more that this goes up, the stronger your items that you could you you make, right? They just get stronger. And uh, you can put points into stuff to increase it. Usually, if it says one out of a hundred, you can make that max out on your own. Try not to put points into that area. Unless, like, you absolutely necessarily have to, but I still would not do that. I got a lot of holes in this round over here. I'm a little worried about that. I mean, we could fix that, but, uh, yeah. Um, you can see I'm, I'm trying to clear out this area. So this right here, this will give me iron. It's a thousand. You can make this. This right here is an iron sheet, but there are boxes you can create that have iron that are in this form. You can upgrade iron to concrete, which is pretty cool. So, in theory, you can make yourself a wood frame. And then upgrade that wood frame to a box. And then upgrade that box. Alright, so here's something where I'm glad this happened. It says the item needs repairing or replacing, right? So, if we go over here, it's at zero. That little line above or below these things are the durability lines, right? This is at 17. You can see the durability lines at halfway. This wooden... Uh, um, club here it's at level 59 and it's durability line is almost gone I thought we we did we've right here we found another axe right 104 um, I'm going ahead and I'm gonna equip that so when you break down an item like this wood club you can scrap it and you'll get you'll recycle basically some of the material back with the stone axe you get stone back 
It costs five to make it, but you get three back. So it's kind of a good way to recycle. Now that I know I forgot about that axe right there, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to finish knocking this out real quick before we do the next quest. But each one you make is stronger. That's the point that I was trying to get across there. Each one you'll make will be stronger. Each one you make will be better. All right, so let's just go ahead right now. So the first thing it wants us craft is a wood bow. So let's go ahead and click on the bow. And we go ahead and push up on the item. And then we go over to arrows. And we can see that I have 18 feathers. I have plenty of wood, plenty of stone. I only have 18 feathers. So we're only going to get 18 arrows. So there's two ways we can do this. We can manually hit this little arrow right here. And go all the way to 18. Right? Or we can go down like, you know, I don't want to waste all 18. So just like in that other part where you can select things, this is how it works too. You can hit this arrow right here. This will automatically go to max. Or, let's say you hit max and you realize, oh fuck, that's like a thousand arrows we're going to make. I don't want a thousand arrows, I want 500. Or whatever it is you're going to make. You go ahead and hit this enter, and then you enter in the number, using the these things up here. And you can enter the number you want. In my case, I want 18 anyways. And so we're just going to max it out. We're going to push up on the D-pad. And I'll explain to what happens here in a minute when we do this. i got to move a few items around. Just to make things easier. So we'll go ahead and we're going to equip the bow. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and clear out my inventory just a little bit. Just because I got some place, some things and places I don't like it. I have like a, I'm like a real trickler when it comes to the routine. I have where places, uh, where things are. Um, my first row, I like to keep a little bit of wood, stone, fibers, and iron on me at all times. So I'll make those the first four items. And then normally... I'll put the arrows next. I'm going to keep this 44 mag cylinder because one of the quest lines we eventually will get will be to go to the trader. Everything else right now, it just can sit where it's at. All right. So, now that we gathered the bow and we got the arrows made, we go to the bow and it says 0 of 18. And you're sitting there and you're, you're like trying to figure this out. You're hitting all the buttons. You don't know what's going on. I'm zooming in. That's what the zoom in button is, the uh, left trigger. I'm hitting the right trigger, which would normally pull it back. You're like, what the fuck? What's going on? Go ahead and hit B and press and hold B. Pressing and holding B on any weapon that's a ranged weapon will... Except for, like, specific guns, like the AKs, you know, 7.62. Uh, so most of the firearms, this won't happen on. But, like, the, the bow and the crossbow, you have an ability to make different types of ammunition. So we have the stone arrows... We have the iron arrows, we have the steel arrows, and then of course we have arrows right here we can catch on fire. Um, you don't have to press and hold B. I just wanted to show you that real quick. But if you just tap B, you'll load the bow. And then of course right trigger will aim down the sights. Let's say you decide not to fire the bow, go ahead and hit B, and you'll not fire. While you're aiming down, you know, pulling this thing, and you hit right trigger, you zoom in a little bit. Um, I use it from time to time. It all depends. I'm just going to go ahead and hit B right now. And so the next thing we need to craft are wood frames. Which are right here at the bottom. Uh, these are good because we're going to craft a whole bunch anyways. So I'm just going to go ahead and max out. I'm just hitting up on the D-pad because I, I just want to make like 10. Um, so I'm going to keep clearing out this area a little bit. And uh, I'm going to just go ahead and clear this area out for a little bit before we get on the next one because the next stuff involves us being inside. And so for right now, I'm just going to let this go. I'll see you in a few seconds. All right. So I took roughly about 15, 20 minutes, maybe a little bit more than that. And I cleared out all the grass. Remember, there was a bunch of trees here and a sign here. The car. I, I just took it all out because eventually what we're going to do is we want to build a wall. Um, one downside to being in the snow, the only downside I can think of right now off the top of my head is there are the snow areas full of lumberjacks. Uh, these guys are really hard. Um, they take a lot more, uh, ammunition to put down just because they're, they're like the strong beefy guys. I, last time I held out in the, in the snow for a while on Horde Night, that's all I got. We're lumberjacks, so I might just give it a try, and hopefully we, we can pan out. So there are multiple walls we can build. We can build a wood wall. Um, 
There is rock walls. There are different type of rock walls. Cobblestone wall, concrete wall. We can build a metal wall. Uh, concrete is always going to be the strongest. Um, our house looks a little beat up. We'll end up repairing everything here in a minute. So, the only plus side about being in the snow, right, is if you have your fist up. Or if you're digging into the ground. Either way, it doesn't matter. Is if you punch the ground, I don't know, you saw it from time to time, you saw it. But I'm getting this little symbol, right? This little weird triangle symbol. Well, if we go ahead and we go to our inventory, that little weird tri triangle symbol is a snowball. We can use that with these empty jars right here to make water. Snowballs and glass jars will make water. And water is key to survival. So even if you do a random generated map, right? Pure random. Um, there's always snow. Doesn't matter if it's on novice game or random map. There's always a snow area. And I've been on a random map where there was no water sources at all. Zero. We just went and looted the snow area. And if we didn't go back there for a couple days, the snow area that we dug out would regenerate. So you do technically have an endless supply of water. You just have to make it in the snow form and then put it in the fire pit, which we'll make here in a few minutes. Uh, in the process of clearing out a bunch of stuff, I got a bone. Large bones, we can make a shiv. Let's say you just don't know what the recipe is or anything like that. You go over here, right here, it says right on the D-pad. We go to recipes. Boom. Bone shiv. Go ahead and hit that. Uh, push A on that bone shiv. It'll say, hey, it requires one large bone. We have one large bone, so go ahead and push up on the D-pad. The shiv is basically a makeshift knife. And it will help us, if we kill an animal, to get more materials out of the, uh, out of the animal. Yes, we can use the axe. Um, but knives are better. So, we were last, before I left you for a few minutes to do some stuff... The quest line was to make um, wooden boxes, right? Create create a base. So it wants us to create uh, wood frames. I create a bunch of wood frames. Um, until we can get this place really fortified, any place where there's like glass windows, on like especially the first floor, definitely on the first floor, we want to get rid of them. Two reasons. One, uh, it will mitigate our signature to any zombies in the area and two it will actually help hide um, our uh, our uh, light sources right if we have like a campfire going or the torch going or something like that it will hide it so what I was doing there right right there it says press Y to pick up the wood frames anything that's a frame anything doesn't matter if it's metal frame concrete frame uh, fiber frame whatever it is um, if you lay it down in its frame form, so the way I have it is I have it selected, and I'm hitting left on the trigger, boom, I drop it. You could pick it up. Our quest line, we're just going to go ahead and do it. We're going to close it out. We're going to, I'm hitting um, left trigger, that's the repair button. Right trigger would be the attack button. Look at that, boom. The quest is knocked out. Let's take a look and see what we got here. So the next thing we need to do is a campfire. I'm just going to go ahead and probably put our campfire right here where this makeshift uh, fireplace is at so uh, again we go ahead and hit start we go ahead because I was last working with this this is what was last left we just go ahead and hit basic and we'll get rid of it so campfire require require stone we got 175 stone we got more than enough just go ahead and push up on the d-pad it takes a few seconds so currently my tool belt is full um, I really haven't talked about the items that started off out with we get a torch when we start the game with we get a can of chili uh, a claim land, this increases the block durability of all the items in our area. We get one glass of water and one bandage, right? That's how we start off with. Um, again, this is a tool belt right here. This is our backpack. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll pick this up manually, put it over those wood frames, put those wood frames right there, and then we'll go over and we'll place it. We have successfully completed the first eight quests. Now it's going to ask us to go find the trader. Good news is we are in the snow area. The snow trader um, has, if you know, if you like look around everywhere, and I'll show you because we're going to go there here in a minute. Uh, maybe. How far away is it? Let's take a look at the map. Shouldn't be too far. Yeah, it should be just right up and over the hill from us. Um, yeah. Um, the snow trader has 14 torches. 
that you can steal from him fair and square. He does not get mad that you take them. Um, uh, like I said in the last video, if you watched the last video, if you did, I'm going to reiterate it. So we have the loot abundance set to um, every so many days, right? Uh, how many windows do we have here? i got a few windows here. I need to close off. Let me see what's in the back. All right, so we got a few windows. I'm going to make a whole bunch of these uh, wood frames real quick. Um, 20 should be fine. All right, so as I digress... Um, uh, when you go to like the trader and you steal the torches and the candles and all the items that he has there, which you can take and nobody, you know, you're, you're not going to get in trouble for taking it. Um, even if you're not back there in five days, certain things won't respawn. One of the items that won't respawn in the first five days are the torches. I've noticed in my games, they usually take a while. Um, I think I'll leave the couch there for now. It, uh, eventually we'll need material. The couch will provide us with some fibers. Uh, leather is more important than anything else. Um, our couch doesn't provide any leather. That just provides clothing fabrics. Uh, we can use clothing fabrics to make clothes. Um, So again, I lost the you know the duration of that went back down. So we're gonna go ahead and um, what we'll actually do first is craft a new one, and then we'll scrap this one. And I know it's gonna spawn in there because it takes up the, the first location that was uh, empty. And we'll go ahead and uh, what I'm gonna do it's two o'clock. That's what 1400 says. Um, I might actually just run for that trader right now. Uh, I really don't think it's that far. The problem is, I want to try to reinforce this place a little bit for night one. But at the same time, I also want... Uh, I also want to hit that trader up. So, search everything, right? Search the toilet. Nothing in this toilet. You want to search everything. We're in the kitchen. Anything on the ground like that, those loose things, they'll give you away. You walk on them. They make sound. Um, don't need those, and I don't need short pots right now, so we're going to break those down. Let's see. Garbage can. Anything worth here? Let's see. Some gunpowder. That door's already maxed out. So we got, oh, cabinets up top I missed. Some more stuff we don't really need. Come on, I was hoping for something good here. Um, let's go upstairs. Let's see if there's anything good upstairs. Now, you see how I ran over that and made that sound? That would attract zombies. We don't need that. Let's get rid of that. This really doesn't have anything useful to us we'll have to fix these holes we got more windows up here to seal up with it being cold if we seal it all up completely they'll be good in the end because uh, uh, help keep us warm we don't have to be next to that fireplace all the time so let's get rid of that that could be annoying so we see our door here it's pretty beat up Let's just go ahead and repair it until we can't repair it anymore, which we have a little bit of iron on us, so it should be able to get to the first set. Yep, there it goes. So we'll come back and do some repairs. Uh, right now the idea is just, let's just get to the trader. So I'm going to go ahead and run for the trader. I'm going to beeline it, which means I'm going to take a straight line. I'll see you when I get to the trader. So I made it to the trader. Uh, you notice it's 5 o'clock. Almost an hour and a half went by. I ran into a lot of those um, lumberjack uh, zombies. And I actually filled up my inventory. So I'm full. Which means I can't take none of the torches. Because my... Oh, I, no, I can't. Because I have torches on me. Normally when you... Uh, normally when I get here and my inventory is full, I don't have room to pick up these torches. But we're going to pick up all the torches. And I'll show you where everything's at so you can loot. Um, 
obviously we're gonna grab these torches these are easy ones to grab uh, you can see I'm not really stealing it because it says take right so it is what it is we go in here and the trader for the snow area is right here it's this guy all right it looks like this. this is what the place looks like um, hey buddy like, hey what's I going hope on you didn't blah, let blah. The dead follow you here so I found some items while I was out so we're just gonna sell off everything uh, if it's an item that says sellable it will say sell at a price right there right here so um, I'm gonna sell off everything that I don't need so I don't need that really don't need the wheels right now because I don't think I'm gonna find he does see right there it says no price that means you can't sell it but the MVGs night vision goggles yep we can sell those I have two of them we'll sell that Normally they'll they'll buy the painkillers. I don't need them really, so let's just go ahead and get rid of it. I don't have any need for gas, but gas is actually kind of hard to come by. Now I would keep this uh, axe, but I really don't need it at the current moment, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of it. And then I also found some bullet casings um, in my travels. We don't need those either, so let's just go ahead and get rid of those. He took them all but one. It is what it is. All right. So we'll get rid of that. You know what? He'll buy it. We need to make some money. I want to buy some food. You know? Let's see. Can I split this? Ah, he will. All right. We only need one of these grills. Um, found some first aid kits while I was out. Let's see. Will he take the paper? No, I need 15 of them. Uh, what about the... Nope. What about... He will take the snowberries. Snowberries are a good source of food. The problem is you don't want to eat more than five. All right, eat. Sometimes I don't even want to eat that many. I want to eat, like four is basically what I want to eat. Uh, snowberries after you eat so many will get you sick. They'll make cause you diarrhea. We can go ahead and sell them. You know, we get what five bucks or whatever for ten. So one of the items we definitely need is we need a crock pot to change this uh, the snow into glass. You know, into water. So let's see if he's even selling a crock pot. I haven't found one. He's got a miner's helmet, which is useful because a miner's helmet, um, you can turn on a light and have like a flashlight on your head and still have items in your, and still be able to use your hands. Um, he's got a jacket, which I really like, uh, but you know what? I'm still, I only have, we only made 1,514 uh, gold. So, I mean, I really just want to find a crock pot, and he doesn't have one. Let's check his stash. He doesn't have anything that we need. Uh, he doesn't have, he has food. Let's see what he's got for food here. So we got animal fat, beef stew, and of course the snowberries I saw. So let's go, oh, if we buy the beef stew, we'll have a symbol above our head that will attract the zombies. I really don't want to do that right now. I do have three cans of chili, and I have two cans of cat food. Yeah. You may say cat food, um, but it fills up the tummy. You know, you'll be surprised what you eat when you're starving. So now that well, we've cleared up the inventory, I'll let you show yourself out. yeah, none of the traders are real nice. But we go ahead and take the candles. Anything that says take, just take it. All right. So we go over here, the garbage can, just like any other house. All right. You can loot the crap out of all the houses here. Oh, we look at that. We got. More bullet casings. Will he buy Everything the bullet casings now? Is for sale. He buy them all. So he buys five at a time. So we jump over this. Go ahead and let's just loot away. So I'm gonna loot this area. Uh, I'll, I'll probably. Eh, is there anything I really need to say right now? Except, uh, when we go back to our base, we'll probably have to survive the night. So what we'll try to do is quietly and as carefully as we can try to reinforce everything so we don't get seen. The last thing I want is for um, a bunch of those lumberjacks to spawn in our area and just tear it apart, which they will do. Uh, you, you can search anything in this game, which is outstanding. I love it. Um, you notice I, I didn't actually grab that. I, I broke it down. Um, because, uh, I get material used later 
right here brass we use brass later to make uh bullet casings um you sit here this is a chair right here that would give us leather right you're like sweet just go ahead and break it down but while we're at a trader right they have this little immunity block around them if you go ahead and hit it you hear that ting and you notice we didn't get anything um that ting is basically you 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 are screwed you can't do anything um that's what that message basically says to you uh if you dig down far enough i think it's negative 54 56 i don't remember the exact number but the negative number means how far down we dug uh that's the bottom of the map you can't go any further you'll get the exact same ding uh i did a test one time just to see how far down I can go before I couldn't go any further and that's how far it was it was negative I think it was like negative 56 negative 57 um, and you're asking yourself shifty what are you talking about negative how do you know how far how high you are well ha -ha, I'll show you if you go ahead and go to the map right here at the very bottom it says elevation we are currently plus 12 meters above sea level and it actually means sea level and you can see the line I took so here's our house right here and I basically I didn't beeline it I tried to stay close to the edge because I know there's a house and some water source over here I didn't find it I just went straight here another reason why I didn't go straight here right here this right here is like the second or is it the third highest set of mountains in the game and it's the highest set of mountains in the snow area um, so I refrain from going up and over because it, not only will it take you forever to go up and over it, but you do have a tendency to fall off that ledge and you'll break your legs. And it sounds like there is a zombie inside. Is he inside or is he outside? Did I close that door? He's outside. Okay. Woo, I was getting nervous. There's a burning barrel. Let me take this. This is actually going to be useful later down the line. Let me close that door. I don't remember if I closed this door. I do not want those zombies in here. The zombies can't hurt this guy. Oh, thank God I already closed it. The zombies can't hurt this base. So you're sitting there going, well, fuck, I'm just going to hang out inside here. Rago, because at, I think it's at 20 hundred, the traders close. And when the traders close, they kick you out. Now, it is currently eight or 1840, which is 640. My goal is to be out of here before 7 because it did take me a minute to run here. Now, granted, I had to, I had to fight off a few of the, uh, the loggers. Um, like, there were like six of them at, the, uh, at this place. And there's one outside already. I didn't get them all. He's chasing me down. Uh, I, what I'm going through is I'm just checking everything. There's a uh, munitions box. The last munition box gave us... Uh, 9 mil ammo. What's cool is I go ahead and turn around and sell everything I, I've gathered here, or I can keep it. I am going to keep my hands on that 9 mil ammo. I'm pretty sure because I may get lucky and find a pistol. So you can see the zombies are attacking the, uh, the wall, and it's making it go ping. Um... They can't do any damage. Uh, I have had the trader kick me out because the zombies kept attacking. But uh, this guy's pretty nice. He won't kick us out. Um, so you look around. And you're like, well, that wasn't 14. You only had one. Now you have 10. Well, the other ones are actually down here. So this is the only trader that has a well. You can go down and under. So we go ahead and we just hit the Y button and we go down and under. Woo! This actually will get you to to the um, uh, to the bottom of, or the underneath of the trader. Uh, there are other places where we'll find, uh, caves and stuff we could search. Um, I pretty much know where most of the items are, but what we want to do is we just search. Search everything. Just be a searching fool, because you never know what you're going to find. You literally never know what you're going to find. You, I mean, I come back here in a couple days and the loot here will be different. Ooh, mushrooms. Source of food. Not the hallucination mushrooms. Just the regular ones. They'll give us some food. And I think, if I remember correctly, they'll also give us some um, water. 
as well. I can't. I could be wrong on that, but uh, get hungry. Look at that. We found some stuff. This right here, these wire frames are used to create concrete. We don't need them. Let's just go ahead and break that down. And the claw hammer. Hmm. We'll break it down. And I'm pretty sure that's it. Let me check this last box up here. See, our inventory is already full. I want to try to sell some items off. I probably should have kept that one of those items to sell it off. But, alright. Whatever it is, what it is. So I got everything. Now I have 15 uh, torches. Hey. Didn't I say we're going to get 14 out of here? We got 14. Um, when you tell you everything, it's a little dark down here. Uh, we could test the theory exactly how many days it's going to take, but my guesstimate is about 10 game days. It will take for most of those things to come back. No loitering. Let's see what we can sell off. We can sell that off. Let's try to make some money here. He doesn't want them. We'll take that. He'll take some of the brass. You're like, why are you selling this? Well, right now, day one, we really don't need it. The rocket launchers? I'm not going to need that. Any glass, I'm not going to need. I know I'm hungry. Uh, the burning barrels we want to keep. We can get rid of the flashlight. We really don't need the flashlight right now. Everything else, let's see. Paper. Paper is used to make shotgun shells. Uh, I don't know the schematic for that yet, so there's no point in having that. I think that's everything we can sell off that I really want to get rid of. So, before we leave, we're going to go ahead... I guess you're and we're going to so eat the can of cat food, just because um, it's going to lower our dehydration, which is fine. I'm going to drink the one thing of water we have, but uh, I was hoping to find... Uh, Alright, it's getting late. It's 7 o'clock. I want to make it back to the house, so I'm just going to go ahead and run back to the house. That guy was right there at the door. That was insane. Okay. So if I make it back to the house before nightfall, I'll see you there. Alright, so we're back at the house. It's currently 8.30 at night. It's going to be the time when the zombies run in about an hour or so. Um, inventory is still full, which kind of sucks. We could fix that, though. We're going to remedy that real fast. Uh, my only concern is I really don't have some really strong fortifications um I was an idiot while we were oh never mind here we go we got what I wanted sweet I can't pick it up though because my inventory is full all right so here's what we're gonna do first things first let's go over here to this fire pit we got to put some wood into it so let's split the wood so to split anything doesn't matter what it is if you have a bunch of it you go ahead and you hit X, and it splits it right off the bat. We're going to put some wood in the fire pit. Uh, we have a grill. So let's go ahead and put the grill up in the fire pit. Right, that will leave us some space. Hopefully, let's see, can we craft some water with that being the case? Let's take a look. Bottled water. We can craft some bottled water. Let's go ahead and max that out, see if it will craft. It requires, we don't have the right thing, which is we need... We need the cooking pot, and I haven't found any cooking pots. Can we make the uh, can we make that? All right, we can make murky water. Maybe I'll get lucky, and the murky water will maybe we'll be able to provide. But so when you make anything in the fire pit, it turns that on. That's producing a ton of heat. Um, we want to be able to not worry about that heat source right now. But what we are gonna do is, all right, with a torch in your hand, right, like this, you go ahead and hit raw, uh, the left trigger, you can place it on the wall, right? And, and it adds some light sources. And I know eventually I'm gonna be repairing everything. Right now, I'm gonna create a box. I'm gonna probably create two boxes. Oop. All right. So if we go to basic, we can go to secure storage chest. Now this is the basic one. I'll show you what the regular one or the bigger ones look like later. But for right now, let's just go ahead and do this. We're gonna create one, um, and we're gonna put it in inventory. Yeah, I know I'm hungry and I'm thirsty. So boom, I place it down. 
Uh, in a session where you're gonna invite your friends and stuff, you want this chest unlocked so you can invite, or so your friends can uh, drop items into the boxes that you created and stuff like that. So to do that, you press and hold Y, and you go down to the lock. So I'm using the left joystick and I'm pushing down into the angle, kind of where it's at. And when you have it wholly full up, you unlock it. Let's say you're in an online session and you don't want people access to it. Well, for one, you don't want to lock it, but let's say it is unlocked. You can lock it. You can also add a code to it, right? We're not going to add a code. Um, I'm going to leave this unlocked just because I'm so used to seeing unlocked. But we can store everything in here that we don't need, right? I don't need the bullets right now. I don't need that. I don't need the eggs. I want the mushrooms because I want to be able to eat them here in a few seconds. All this stuff that I gathered I don't need. Um, we're going to put in here because we don't need it. The snowballs, you know what? I'm actually going to put the snowballs in there too because I really don't need it. Paper, the corn I'm going to keep on me because we're going to eat the corn. Um, I'll keep the first aid kits on me. I don't need that. So we can, we're just going to, you know, move a few things around real quick. Uh, I, I'm going to put these outside and away from our house. The idea is that will attract the zombies elsewhere and not on us. Is that it? So that's it. We can go ahead and turn this off. Because that's going to attract a lot of zombies with that on. The, the torches, they don't attract zombies which is good i mean they attract that it, it's a light source but they don't attract zombies as well as uh like the that campfire will that campfire will attract zombies like crazy right now why it's still time i'm gonna try to build up some defenses up so earlier i was i was in a mid-sentence until i saw what i wanted um to help us the the weakest part of this whole place are these doors, right? This door right here and that back door. I'm going to I'm gonna get rid of probably one of these doors because it just makes it easier. But what we can do, right, is we can put a chair. It's a little trick. Most people don't know about this trick. But if you put a, door, a chair in front of the door, um... The pathfinding abilities in the version that we have on the console, they have to go around it. They won't go through it. They'll go around it. And with that being the case, they'll go and hit the wall. Which, the wall has more defenses than the than the doors do. Now, I did max out both our... our, our, our I did max out both doors. They have iron, actually. So, in our case, the doors would actually be stronger than the walls at the current moment. But, in the end... We are just going to do that. It will help us out uh, in the long run by doing that. And so what I'm going to do, it's about to be nighttime. With it being nighttime, I'm going to go ahead and eat some food. I have some murky water. I'm not really thirsty at the current moment, so I try to refrain from drinking it. But we want, one of the things we definitely want to do is this block. Right? We definitely... Here, let's put a light source over here so we can see what the heck is going on over here. I'm going to put this block right here because this is probably going to be the door i'm going to use most often uh when we do this this confirms our location i'm going to put it up a little higher uh you got that nice sound but it actually increased the block duration for good uh, good ways not a whole bunch but a good way so most of these blocks are a little bit stronger um at night time so when it's night time like this uh if you push down on the right joystick, you go into hide mode. When you're in hide mode, you can hide from the zombies. So let's go ahead, since the food is getting low right now, let's just go ahead and start working on eating. I got a few more things to say before this video ends. Um, as you can see, the mushrooms not only increased our food, but it also increased our water, which is great. Uh, you can grow mushrooms. Uh, to grow mushrooms, you're going to need a hoe to till the land. And then you're also going to need fertilizer. But we'll get into that later. So the goal for me and for this tutorial is 
we want to set up a basic defense. Uh, it doesn't matter where you are, snow, desert, you still want a basic defense. And in our case, our basic defense is going to be... Um, we need a wall. Golly, I forgot that the chili would make us thirsty. And I'm really not happy that... Let's see, is there a way I can turn that murky water without... I got bottled water, but I don't think I can make it. Yeah, it says require cooking pot, and I don't have it, and I'm thirsty. Unfortunately, I have to drink one of these, because if you're thirsty, it's bad. I'm going to get an upset tummy. No! Yeah, look at that right there, diarrhea. Diarrhea affects our stamina. Um, good thing it doesn't affect our health, but they gave me 21 water. Listen to that. It's officially nighttime. It is now 10 o'clock at night. Zombies will run. Um, my bow is at level 2 and almost out. I'm going to stay in sneak mode for the night. Uh, next video, we'll start day 2, and I'll go over a bunch of things. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to try to... We already cleared out an area. Uh, the, yeah, the next thing we want to do is we want to get a bunch of wood, stone, and clay. Uh, the wood we'll use to make spikes, log spikes. Uh, the stone and clay we'll use to make cobblestone. Um, if I make 600 cobblestone frames, we will need 6,000 cobblestone. Good news is one piece of clay and one piece of rock equals one cobblestone. 600 should be more than enough than what we need. Um, that is our objective tomorrow is to build a wall around our place and then fortify this house. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you on day two. Y'all have a good one. Peace. Oh yeah, you gotta get Swiftney.